Hello, good morning everyone. Meteorologist Jim Dickey here with another edition of Tracking the Tropics on this Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Hey, this is actually the first time I've cut one of these videos so far this hurricane season because since the official start of the season back on June 1st, it's been quiet. We've had no name storms since uh, we had Andrea back before the season. Uh, but that looks, in all likelihood, about to change. Now let's begin with a wide view of the Atlantic showing generally speaking, quiet conditions, as we expect to see this time of year. The deep tropical Atlantic, that doesn't really start to turn active until we get to the tail end of this month, and especially into August and September. You see a complex of storms moving off the coast of Africa, but there's just too much dry Saharan air out there right now, too much wind shear across the tropical, uh, the eastern, at least, tropical Atlantic for anything to develop there. Also watching a little tropical wave moving its way through the uh, Leeward Islands right now, but again, no development expected outside of any of that. Rather, we talk about development in July, especially the first half of July as we're in. We tend to look closer to home. You see here I have uh, typical tracks and areas of development or origin uh, during the month of July. Note the tracks start towards uh, the Leeward Islands. Don't pay much attention to that. This is uh, more speaking to late July, and we start to see that activity going in the main development region, as we call it. But note the areas of origin, one of which... It's the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, this time of year, when things form, they tend to form closer to the home because often they start out of non-tropical systems, be that a stalled front, an upper level low, or in this case, a little complex of thunderstorms uh, that will be moving its way off of the coast of Florida, of North Florida, later on today and into the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, you see all the thunderstorm activity going with it. It's been a stormy morning here in southwest Florida, sort of thanks to that low. This time of year, you get broad low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. Chances are you're talking uh, quite a bit of thunderstorm activity. Well, as that low migrates southward, there's definitely a uh, pocket of very warm water and calm conditions that should help this to form. So there's your water temperatures. Generally speaking, we look at temperatures up above 78 degrees. That's your sort of threshold for tropical development. So very much there, like bath water out there in the northern Gulf of Mexico right now. And this is looking at wind shear. When we talk about tropical development, we're looking for calm conditions as you go up in the atmosphere. You don't want winds changing with direction or changing with speed as you go up uh, because that can help to sort of tear developing storms apart. I like to think of it as thunderstorms just able to develop and then they have calm conditions. They can just keep going on end uh, to eventually become those larger uh, tropical cyclones. And yeah, that's sort of exactly what's expected to happen. We have low shear, we have warm waters, we have an 80% chance for development for the NHC. As this moves into the northern Gulf and slowly drifts its way westward, high chance for the NHC for this to come together at least into a depression, if not a uh, tropical storm. Now, of note, note that third bullet point. This is not in any way a threat to southwest Florida. This is going to stay well off to our north and west because we are being guarded by the Atlantic Ridge. It's sort of your steering winds, your steering uh, influences on this developing system. This is by Thursday morning. So we have our ridge of high pressure to the east of Florida. That's going to act as sort of our shield, keep this from coming any further east than it already is. This meanders out into the northern Gulf, and then it's going to start to feel the pull of the high pressure that's out uh, over the, uh, the four corners in the Rockies. There's also in between, you see how the winds up into uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. See how they're sort of diving southward a little bit, a little bit of a dip in those winds. That's a trough of low pressure. That's going to help to sort of keep that and drag that further northward here too and bring a weakening in between those two ridges of high pressure. So bottom line, this works its way slowly off to the west here as we go uh, through the next couple days. These are the spaghetti plots. I'm not sure why this keeps taking away uh, the water on this map. But these are the spaghetti plots, each individual line, a different model forecast. And you see there's quite a bit of spread. It's all going to depend on how quickly this comes together. The stronger it is, the more likely it's to sort of feel that pull of that ridge over the four corners, dragging it westward. Whereas if it's weaker, it just sort of meanders and eventually steers back to the coast. But the model's saying anywhere from Mobile Bay all the way west into Texas uh, for a potential landfall here. Uh, and, you know, in all likelihood, it's not going to exactly matter exactly where that center goes. This, most likely, will be mainly a uh, rain threat, a flooding threat. As you go forward in time, this is our in-house storm tracker model, we call it. This tends to do a very good job of developing tropical systems. So here's what this one individual model is saying. This is by tomorrow morning. We have our low out there in the Gulf of Mexico. At this point in time, you can see the winds here. It's already starting to sort of close those winds off, a sign that we have 
you know, that closed circulation at the surface that the Hurricane Center will be looking for as they go to determine when a depression or storm has formed. This is by uh, early Tuesday morning. Now you definitely have, look just to the south of Louisiana, you definitely have that closed circulation on the model uh, as it continues to move its way westward. And it works its way further off to the west on this model. It brings it in in uh, eastern Texas as you go into Friday and the weekend. And note here too, to the north, you have a stalled out front. Anytime you have sort of that stalled out front, that's going to act as sort of a boundary extra lift. You have your uh, tropical system going on shore. Somebody is going to see, I think, some very significant rainfall from this before all is said and done. This is the GFS model, a run early this morning, and it is picking up on an area of rainfall here, seven inches. What I don't want you to look at is where this is putting the rain just yet, because the exact track isn't known at this point in time. But I do think the ingredients are in place with this slow moving tropical system, with that stalled front to the north, somebody will likely pick up somewhere in the range five, 10 inches of rain, if not more than that. So the primary concern is look at this storm, which again, if it takes a name, will be Tropical Storm Barry. Uh, the main threat would be flooding. We'll of course be watching for the full suite of threats from a landfalling tropical system. At this point, I don't think winds are a huge concern with this, but uh, you know, if this sits over the Gulf for a little bit longer, perhaps it does uh, pick up strength and uh, brings more of a wind threat. Uh, storm surge, anytime you have a landfalling tropical system that's moving those winds around uh, on the eastern side of it, we could be dealing with some storm surge here, and there is a, uh, at least a medium threat for some uh, severe weather, potentially tornadoes. So all this we'll be watching for, again, not a threat for southwest Florida, the northern Gulf Coast. We'll have updates uh, throughout the next couple days here on ABC7. Uh, when this does form, I'll be back with another of these uh, tracking, the tropical, uh, trapping, tracking the Tropics videos as well. Until then, have a great day.